Darion Kendrick is not as bad of a corner as you think, and I would go as far as to say he's been really good this year. Before we get into that, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And now I'm going to state my case. So Darion Kendrick, uh, as we all know, was arrested earlier this week, and there's a very good chance he's going to not only play but also start. Uh, and when you listen to Sean McVay, you can tell this team very much values him. And I'm going to explain exactly why they value him as much as they do. So first off, if you didn't know, here are the stats for this season, according to PFF. Uh, he is tied for number one in the league. That is tied with Akella Witherspoon in receptions allowed with 11. He's number one in snaps per reception with 19.5. That's ahead of Akella Witherspoon. That means every 19.5 snaps, he is giving up a reception, and that's the best in the league. So keep that in mind. Um, that's ahead of last year's uh, top guy, uh, you probably heard of his name, Sauce Gardner of the New York Jets. Number two in reception percentage, 45.8. So 45.8% of the time, uh, someone is coming down with the ball against Darion Kendrick, but that is second in the league. He's tied for second in fewest yards allowed with 130. He has, He's number four in snaps per target, uh, 8.9. He's ninth in average depth of target, uh, 12.5 he's 10th in yak allowed 52 yards and he's 12th in passer rating when targeted 76.7 look Darion Kendrick has gotten a bad rap and it's an unfair rap um, he was dismissed from the Clemson program he worked his tail off to get things going with Georgia he was supposed to be a top three round pick but because of the things that had happened to him and he didn't test very well athletically. He fell to the sixth round. But honestly, he's been an absolute steal. And I'm going to mention, you know, as we get through this, why. But, I mean, you could make an argument. He's one of the biggest steals of the 2022 draft. And there are a lot of fans that just can't stand the guy. So I'm going to explain exactly why that's the case and why we should be giving this guy more credit, but why he also needs to work on something. So, um, look... With Kendrick, he's not a Kella Witherspoon. Okay, he's not six foot four. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't run a four four. He was actually very slow test. I believe it was a four six or even a four seven uh, forty time. It was not great, um, but he's a six foot one, hundred ninety pound corner. What you see is what you get, and he works extremely hard, down in, down out. And the thing I love about him is his tenacity in coverage. He doesn't back down from anybody. That's the first thing. But the second thing is when you watch the film, he gives up a huge play and he lets that play go. That's now history. He's not thinking about it. A lot of young corners in this league, they let that stuff get to them. I mean, you're seeing it with Emmanuel Forbes over with Washington. He gives up, you know, a big chunk play and then they come right back to him and he's not, you know, he's just not ready. He's thinking about that previous play and you could tell that's not the case with Darion Kendrick. This guy has just the ability to move on and it's not a big deal. Like it's just play to play to play, uh, you know, th this, this mindset where he's like, all right, I gave up a touchdown the next time I'm going to shut him down. And he does. And so, you know, I think really he's predominantly a zone corner. Uh, he has the tendency uh, you know, to, I think he can work in man, but he's not, he's not great in man coverage. And when they play man, you can see he's not great in man coverage. He's not bad. He's not great though. I think he's great. He's a great zone corner. I'm going to say that right now. The snap to snap memory is the thing that I really love about him. Um, but very good zone corner. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about it here. In zone, he gives up a 44.1 passer rating, 4 for 12 when targeted, only giving up 4 catches for 41 yards and 0 touchdowns. However, in man, 4 for 8 for 70 yards and a touchdown, 119.8 passer rating. So, this is the distinction. See, you see the other guy on the other side wearing number 44, Kella Witherspoon in man, and you feel good about it. You feel good about leaving him on an island. He can handle it. Darion, however, doesn't stick when he's in man. And this is going to take time and he can get better. But he tends to not buy into what he was taught. He tends to not buy in 
and believe in his own technique and gets very grabby and gets panicky. That is my issue with Darion in that man coverage. And the 119.8 passer rating shows that as well as the six penalties. Um, Kendrick is a very smart football player. You see that on film. He's starting as a sixth round pick in the, you know, last year's draft his second year for a reason. And he's taken strides to become a very good football player. And this is where the part of the video where, okay, maybe if you didn't believe me, how much this guy's improved, let's take a gander. So Kendrick played 308 coverage snaps in, in 12 games last season, just a little bit more than the sample we have now, but it's not much more. So I think it's a really good comparison. So he's tied for 60th in receptions allowed with 39 last year. So 60th in receptions, mind you, I just said this year he's first. He's only allowed 11 receptions and he's played what 40, 50 snaps fewer. That's insane. That's a huge, huge improvement going from allowing 39 to only allowing 11. And say what you will, and I understand last year the offense was worse. There are some variables here. Um, now, because the offense is playing better, it's allowed Raheem Morris to be more aggressive, play more aggressive match zone, play more man than we've seen, um, and blitz more. At the same time, that team, he was playing right next to Jalen Ramsey. That team had Leonard Floyd. That team had Aaron Donald. That team had Bobby Wagner. So let's just understand something here. As great, you know, as, as much better as the offense is this year, that defense. That had a lot of talent last year. Let's not, you know, let's not deny that. And this defense, what's so impressive is everything that Akello's doing, everything that Kendrick's doing is despite the fact this is not a top 15 pass rush in the league. So keep that in mind as we go through these numbers. 111th in snaps per reception. That is 7.7 .7 snaps per reception. So 7.7 .7 snaps every 7.7. .7, he was giving up a reception. 111th in the league. This year, he's number one. He's giving up a reception every 19.5. And before you say anything, it's because the zone defense, they ran more zone last year than any team. And what I mean by that is the zone percentage snaps run. The top three are Jalen Ramsey. Well, Darian Kendrick's number one, Jalen Ramsey and David Long last year. And I think Troy Hill was fifth. So that kind of gives you that idea. So, um, we move on. Reception percentage allowed. Tied for 85th last year, 69.6% .6 of the time, almost 70. That's 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 times, just about, wide receivers were coming down with the rock in those one-on-one -on -one situations against Kendrick. This year, however, it's at 45.8, so not even, well, we'll just round it up to 5. 5 out of 10 times, he's giving it up. So that's half the time. That's actually really good when you think about it. Number two in the league, mind you, when you think about it. So now you look at, okay, the reception percentage allowed. How about receiving yards allowed? He was 97th last year in receiving yards allowed. And this year, okay, in receiving yards allowed, he is allowed the second fewest with 130. Tied for the second fewest. He was number four, sorry, he, he's number four this year in snaps per target, 8.9. 8 and last year, people could not wait to throw the ball at Darion Kendrick, uh, who actually finished in, uh, he was 106th in snaps per target, 5.3 snaps per target. That's a lot of targeting. And you know that they're targeting a, a young corner, a rookie corner, when you know that you have him beat. And that's what they, they knew. Last year, He's tied for 59th in average depth of target with 111. This year, he's tied for uh, he is ninth in average depth of target with 12.5. This year, he's 10th in yak allowed of 52. Last year, he was 97th in yak allowed, so that's yards after the catch with 228 yards. He was 103rd in passer rating when targeted at 114.5 last year, and this year he's 12th with 76.7. So last year, again, I can't stress this enough, no one played more zone than the Rams. So it's a little different when you have to just, you're stuck on a guy, have to play man coverage all the time, 
It's not like this year's been any easier of an assignment or last year was any easier of an assignment. They're pretty decent to compare. I, I think there's some things, there's some variables to take into consideration. This is a better team. You see the offense moving the ball a little bit better. The offense has still had its moments where they've sputtered and the defense has had to really stay on the field for a long time and they haven't really missed a beat. They've done a nice job. So I just think no doubt Darion Kendrick, who had an above a hundred passer rating when targeted in man or zone. So both of them hundred in man hundred in zone over hundred, by the way, it was like 140 in man last year he's improved massively in 2023 massively it is it's ridiculous honestly how much he's improved it's it's you know credit to the hard work he's put in I'm sure it has something to do with Aubrey Pleasant being there I think Raheem Morris has made some adjustments but let's just give the kid credit in his second season in the NFL at age 23 this guy just looks like he's becoming something of a gem and instead, there are a lot of fans that want to say this guy's trash. And I got to tell you, I don't like it. And that's why I want to make this video. Because I understand everyone has their opinion and you are free to have your opinion. I'm not trying to say that you're wrong about it. But let's recognize what this kid's doing right now. Because it's impressive. And you could say, oh, well, he's playing off of Kello. He was playing off Jalen Ramsey last year. Where did that get him? You can't say that and, you know, not count the other thing. So when I constantly say, and I say these words all the time, 97% of the time, Darion Kendrick has been great. It's the 3% that has been the problem. I mean the penalties and a few splash plays that he's allowed, um, missed tackles, are why we aren't talking about him like the Rams have one of the best cornerback duos in football right now. Because statistically speaking, we already know Akella Witherspoon's in the top five in just about every metric. Darion Kendrick is in the top 12 in every metric. In almost every single metric of those, he's in the top 10. And the top of those metrics, he's in a, a bunch that are in the top five. This is a top cornerback duo in the league. Unfortunately, it's been the penalties. That's been the issue. Three penalties in 2022, six in 2023. That's the reason the 23-year-old out of Georgia, who was drafted 213th overall and arguably one of the biggest steals of the 2022 draft, whether you realize it or not, is not getting the praise he deserves. Simple. I summed it up in under 15 minutes. This is why Sean McVay is excited about him coming back. He wants to get him on the field. This is why they didn't just sit him out. They wanted to hear. They like this kid a lot. He surpassed the fourth rounder, Kobe Durant, on the depth chart, and we didn't think that was going to happen. And I told you in the offseason, I didn't buy into this kid. I didn't think Darion Kendrick starting made any sense. When I first saw him at the beginning of the season, I could easily see right away against Seattle, right away against San Francisco, despite the touchdown, of course, the penalty, is that... This guy's different. He's, he's developing right before our eyes. We're talking so much about Apuka Nakua here. We're talking so much about Kyron Williams here. Kyron Williams is a better example. We're talking a lot about Kyron Williams. We're, we're hyping up Kyron Williams. You got to keep that same energy. Darion Kendrick has those flaws. Don't get me wrong. Tends to be grabby. Doesn't stick to his technique at times. If he corrects that, he is going to be so damn good. And they have him in his second year of his contract already doing this. And instead, what does everyone want to say? He's trash. Start Duke Shelley. Start Kobe Durant. Start Trey Tomlinson. It's not to say the three guys I just listed aren't good corners. I'm very excited about Duke Shelley. I'm very excited about Trey Tomlinson, and I really like Kobe Durant. I think he's off to a slow start, and he'll figure it out. But why is it that Darion Kendrick doesn't ever seem to get a pass? Because I don't think people are privy to this information. I mean, it's on PFF, but I don't think people want to go out and look for it. A lot of people have their mind made up about this guy. 
And that's why I felt like I had to put this video out. So, Darion Kendrick, in conclusion, am I saying he's the top 10 corner in the league? The stats would probably say yes. I'm going to say he's top 32, which is good enough to be a starter in the league, with the upside to be really good. I'm going to say this right now. If he figures it out with the penalties and cuts that, that play down, learns to trust his instincts more, he's going to be one of the best corners in football. And that's saying a lot because the guy doesn't have the speed that an Akella Witherspoon has. The guy doesn't have the speed that a Jalen Ramsey had or a David Long or Troy Hill or even Kobe Durant. But he's making it work. And again, he's a zone corner. Could he get better man? Sure. But he's predominantly a zone corner. And the under 50 passer rating when targeted in zone shows that. So, guys, he's made significant strides. It's time to give him his praise. Keep following him. Look at number one. The missed tackles, yeah, okay. But what he's doing, again, without an elite pass rush, this is one of the hardest jobs any Rams corner, I think, has had. Con consider, I think this is probably the worst pass rush the Rams have had in recent memory uh, with Sean McVay's team. They are really balling out, and they've gone up against the 49ers, the Seahawks, the Bengals, the Eagles. So what's going to happen when they stop going up against these top-notch teams? They're going to start dominating, and everyone's going to start to notice it. So those are my thoughts. If you disagree, totally fine, but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Did I change your opinion on Darion Kendrick? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. And I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. We start playing Pick'em or Weekly Fantasy for any sport today, Jake. Users will receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 if they use promo code OTE at sign up. Start playing Pick'em and Weekly Fantasy football today with Underdog Fantasy. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.